15 Things You Didn't Know About Venezuela Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello dear ALUXers and welcome back to our channel. Now what would life be like if we weren't able to have wild and exotic experiences from time to time? And what says exotic better than Latin America? And that's why today we're taking a moment to talk to you about a country that's full of both controversy and hidden wonders, Venezuela. The Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela is a federal republic on the northern coast of South America. The territory was colonized by Spain in 1522, and the country declared its independence in 1811, then fully gained it in 1830. The country has been subject to several political scandals and crisis during the last 25 years, but continues to hold a key role in the geopolitical scene, in spite of having been declared to be in default with debt payments. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at ALUX. This subject is so wide, we need to organize our thoughts and present things in order. So, let's move on and talk about the 15 things you didn't know about Venezuela. Number 1. Venezuela was the first country in the world to abolish capital punishment for all crimes. Preceded only by San Marino, which only abolished death penalties for ordinary crimes, in 1848, Venezuela was the first country in the world to abolish it completely, and one of only three countries to have it abolished by 1900. The abolition entered into force through the 1863 Constitution. According to Article 43 of the current Venezuelan Constitution, signed in 1999, the death penalty cannot exist, and the following article establishes that the maximum penalty is 30 years in jail. But is this a relevant indicator of how respectful of human rights Venezuela is? Um, not so much, we would say. Number 2. Venezuela used to have its own time zone, offset by half an hour. Venezuela is located approximately between meridians 60 degrees west and 75 degrees west, corresponding to UTC 4 o'clock and UTC 5 o'clock with respect to the Greenwich meridian. Throughout history, the country established various meridians as their time zone reference, but what is most interesting is that between 1912 and 1965, their official meridian was 67 degrees 30 minutes west, which implied that Venezuela's time zone was UTC 430, half an hour in between the two normal UTCs. But apparently the Venezuelan standard time led to an increase in energy consumption, which is why in 2016, President Maduro announced that the country would return to UTC 4 o'clock. Number 3. Venezuela's Got the Largest Oil Reserves in the World with a total of 297 billion barrels of oil as of January 2014, Venezuela's oil reserves had surpassed those of the former world leader, Saudi Arabia. However, since Venezuela's crude oil is very heavy by international standards, and therefore much of it must be processed by specialized refineries, and since the political instabilities in the country, including massive strikes, tend to influence its prosperity, it seems that Venezuela produces less than a fourth of what Saudi produces per year. However, Venezuela continues to be one of the largest suppliers of oil to the United States, sending about 1.4 million barrels to the country per day. Number 4. Venezuela's name was inspired by Venice It seems that when Amarillo Vespucci got there, he saw native stilt houses built in Lake Maracaibo, which reminded him of Venice. Therefore, he made the remark that this land was some sort of Venezuela, or Little Venice, for which the Spanish version is Venezuela. However, there is another possible explanation that has come to light, the one of Martin Fernandez de Enciso, a member of the Vespucci and Ojeda crew. According to his work, Suma da Geografia, the indigenous people that the crew found there called themselves the Venezuela, which implies that the name Venezuela evolved from a native word. Number 5. Hugo Chavez's daughter is the richest person in Venezuela, with a net worth of $4.2 billion. Maria Gabriela Chavez, the daughter of the former leader of the Fifth Republic movement and president of Venezuela, is reported to keep an entire fortune in US and Andorra bank accounts. Her estimated net worth is approximately $4.2 billion, making her richer than the telecommunications magnate Gustavo Cisneros, worth $3.6 billion, and food and beverage mogul Lorenzo Mendoza, worth $2.7 billion. 
After her father's death in 2013, she maintained warm relations with Fidel Castro and Argentine President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, and the rumor has it she'll mount a campaign to become president in the future. Number 6. A prison in Venezuela was the place where inmates opened a nightclub. Wondering how chaotic a system full of corruption can get? Oh, well, if you think about these inmates that open their own nightclub with strippers and a lights and sound show, we'd say pretty chaotic. They hosted their friends and family at an inauguration of the so-called Yacht Club, located at a prison on Margarita Island. This, my friends, is what you can get if you use bribery and intimidation in an overcrowded penal system. Criminals who exercise control over the facilities built to incarcerate them. Well, looks like depending on who you are, you can have a lot of fun being held in a prison in Venezuela. Number 7. Venezuela gave us Gustavo Dudamel. Born in 1981, Gustavo Dudamel is a conductor and violinist, as well as the director of Orquesta Sinfonica Simón Bolivar and the Los Angeles Philharmonic. He made his debut in 2006 at La Scala Milan with Don Giovanni and has conducted several famous orchestras throughout his career, including the Stuttgart Radio Symphony Orchestra and the Gothenburg Symphony Orchestra in 2013. He conducted the Simon Bolivar Symphony Orchestra during the funeral of Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, and in 2016, he conducted the Youth Orchestra LA, which accompanied Chris Martin, Beyonce, and Bruno Mars at the Super Bowl. Also, he's the youngest guest conductor to ever conduct the Vienna Philharmonic in the New York State concert, which he did in 2017 at the age of 35. Number 8. President Maduro swore to do whatever it took to stop the opposition from coming to power. In spite of his party, PSUV, losing the 2005 parliamentary elections, President Maduro boycotted the opposition from coming to power. How did he manage to do that? For starters, the day after the elections, he substituted the entire Supreme Court. A constitutional move? Of course not. The PSUV government used this violation to suspend several elected opponents, and in 2016, Maduro approved an unconstitutional economic emergency decree, relegating to his own figure the legislative and executive powers. Adding that to the judiciary power he held through previous designation of the Supreme Court judges. Thus, he effectively controls all three branches of Venezuelan government. Number 9. The Venezuelan 1996 Miss Universe contestant was fat shamed by Donald Trump. Alicia Machado was only 19 years old when she was crowned the winner of the Miss Universe pageant, but someone took care to throw shade at this happy event of her life. As she put on some weight after winning the contest, Donald Trump shamed her about it, calling her things like Miss Piggy and an eating machine. 20 years later, she became a U.S. citizen just to be able to vote against the man and show her support for Clinton. Anyways, in the most watched debate between the two, Hillary brought up Trump's remarks to Machado, including the Miss Housekeeping remark, making reference to her origins, to point out just how disrespectful of women he really is. Number 10. Venezuela is importing expertise from abroad, from Cuba to be more specific. Venezuela developed a system that consists in providing Cuba with 53,000 barrels of below market rate oil a day in exchange for the service of thousands of physicians, teachers, sports trainers, and other skilled professionals. However, this seems to have been turned into a way of escaping Cuba. Many of the Cuban doctors sent to Venezuela ended up defecting to the U.S. In 2014, it was reported by Solidarity Without Borders that at least 700 Cuban medical personnel had left Venezuela in the previous year and that up to hundreds of Cuban personnel had asked for advice on how to escape from Venezuela weekly. The problem is that, once sent to Venezuela, the Cuban personnel cannot refuse to work, cannot express complaints, and end up being blackmailed as threats against their families in Cuba appear. Want to find out some more interesting and hopefully less frightening facts about Cuba? Go check out our 15 Things You Didn't Know About Cuba video by clicking in the top right corner. You won't regret it. Number 11. The Angel Falls in Venezuela is the tallest waterfall in the world. With a height of 979 meters, or 3,211 feet, and a plunge of 807 meters, or 2,368 feet, Angel Falls is the world's highest uninterrupted waterfall. 
It's situated along a fork in the Karapakapai Meru River, which flows into the Churon River. The entire area is situated on the Kanaima National Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The falls are named after Jimmy Angel, a U.S. aviator who was the first person to fly over the falls and whose ashes were scattered over the falls on July 2, 1960. Angel Falls also inspired the setting of the Disney 2009 animated film Up, however in the film the location was called Paradise Falls. Number 12. In 2009, Venezuela made it a crime to sell violent video games and toys. Apparently, there is a law that prohibits violent video games and toys, which was passed in November 2009. To be more specific, what it prohibits is the manufacture, import, distribution, purchase, sale, rental, and use of violent toys and violent video games. Furthermore, Article 13 of the same law makes the promotion to purchase or use violent toys or video games punishable with a fine of between 2,000 and 4,000 units. And even if you thought about importing, manufacturing, or distributing them, bad news, you risk spending three to five years in prison. Number 13. In Venezuela, one person is being killed every 21 minutes. So you thought video games were Venezuela's most serious violence problem? Oh well. According to the United Nations, poor political and economic conditions in the country has made crime rates in Venezuela skyrocket. Nowadays, the country has the second highest murder rate in the world. We're talking about violent crimes such as murder and kidnapping. The situation is so serious that the military is ordered to avoid public places during nighttime hours since criminals often attempt to steal their weapons. According to the data provided by Venezuelan Violence Observatory, the homicide rate for 2013 was approximately 79 per 100,000 and the murder rate in the capital of Caracas was 122 per 100,000 residents. Number 14. The King of Spain told the President of Venezuela to shut his mouth Back in 2007, when Hugo Chavez was still president, he met the Spanish monarch Juan Carlos, and things did not go so smoothly. As the Venezuelan leader was in full flow and almost impossible to shut up, Juan Carlos interrupted him to ask, why don't you shut up, in an outstanding breach of protocol. What went on from there was all downhill. Venezuela's opposition portrayed the encounter as a humiliation, while Fidel Castro issued a statement backing his ally and stated Chavez's criticism of Europe was devastating. Number 15. The U.S. Rejected Aid Offered by Venezuela After Hurricane Katrina Understanding the whole point of humanitarian aid is not as easy as it seems. After Hurricane Katrina, Venezuela was one of the first countries to offer assistance, consisting of over $1 million, several mobile hospitals, water treatment plants, canned food, bottled water, heating oil, 1,100 doctors, and 26.4 metric tons of medicine. What did the U.S. say to this? No thanks. Luckily, other countries such as Australia, Kuwait, India, and China made substantial pledges that were accepted. Now that you've learned some more about Venezuela, we're curious to know, who's the Venezuelan public figure that inspires you the most? Let us know down in the comments. Still here? Of course you are. You're ready for that bonus fact, aren't you? Number 16. Venezuela sometimes prohibits the sale of alcoholic beverages. For starters, in Venezuela, 21 hours before every election, the sale and distribution of alcoholic beverages is prohibited through the national territory. This includes the restriction of all dealers, liquor stores, supermarkets, restaurants, wineries, pubs, bars, public entertainment, clubs, and any and all establishments that market alcoholic beverages. The reason behind this drastic rule is the need to prevent violent alcohol-induced confrontations because of the high political polarization. Another occasion on which similar restrictions are set in place is the Holy Week in order to reduce the alarming rate of road traffic accidents during the holidays. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers! Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer and we'll see you back tomorrow.